Hello everyone, welcome to another Nalcom video. I'm your host Evan, and today we'll be talking about bug bounties. Today we'll be covering server-side template injections, and these will be part of a mini bug bounty series that we'll be doing at Nalcom. So today I'll provide a attack sample, explain what server-side template injections are, what template engines are, and essentially how you can perform this attack and how you can mitigate it. So if you enjoy these type of videos, please press the thumbs up so we know what to record in the future, and I hope you enjoy this video. To understand server-side template injections, we got to understand what a template engines are. A template engine enables you to use static template files in your application. At runtime, the template engine replaces variables in a template file with actual values and transforms the template into a HTML file sent to the client. This approach makes it easier to design a HTML page. In a template, the developer will define both static content and a placeholder for dynamic values. At runtime, the template will be processed by its engine to map dynamic value references in the template. So, in order to abuse template engines, the attacker will need to take advantage of the capabilities made available. This is where server-side template injections come in. Server-side template injections are where attackers are able to use native template syntax to inject a malicious payload into a template, which is then executed on the server side. This allows attackers to inject arbitrary template directives in order to manipulate the template engine, often enabling them to take complete control of the server. As the name suggests, server-side template injection payloads are delivered and evaluated server-side potentially making them more dangerous than a typical client-side template injection. I've made an application vulnerable to this attack. Now, while it's highly simplified in our example, do not let that throw you off. What you see is essentially what you get. It's a matter of actually searching for these vulnerabilities and knowing how to identify them. As with any vulnerability, the first step towards exploitation is being able to find it. Perhaps the simplest initial approach is to try fuzzing the template by injecting a sequence of special characters commonly used in template expressions, as we're going to do with Burp Suite Intruder. You can see here that I've got a payload list already defined in my directory and I'm going to make sure that my payloads are not encoded. Here you can see that we've got a successful hit which identifies a potential engine such as Ginger. So once we've detected the template injection, the next step is to identify the template engine. From our results, we can easily identify that it's Ginger. Although there are a huge number of templating languages, many of them use a very similar syntax that is specifically chosen not to clash with HTML characters. There is a specific tool that we can use to make our lives easier, a tool that we will use in this video. And in the next, I will cover how to detect it manually but the concept is simple. A common way of doing this is to inject arbitrary mathematical operations using syntax from different template engines. You can then observe whether they are successfully evaluated. To help with this process, you can use a decision tree similar to the one I have drawn. You can use a tool called TPL map, which identifies the vulnerable parameter for us and the engine, which we'll use to drop a reverse shell. The usage is quite simple. By running the command with the dash H option, we can see multiple cases which options we can use. However, we will be using the dash U option just to specify the URL. And we can see that it has detected Ginger as we previously thought. So now we can attempt to drop a reverse shell with the dash dash OS shell flag. And here we are, we are root. So how can we protect ourselves from such a nasty vulnerability? One of the simplest ways to avoid introducing server-side template injection vulnerabilities is to always use a logicless template engine, such as Mustache. Another measure is to only execute users' code in a sandboxed environment where potentially dangerous modules and functions have been removed altogether. Unfortunately, sandboxing untrusted code is inherently difficult and prone to bypasses. Finally, another complementary approach is to accept that arbitrary code execution is all but inevitable and apply your own sandboxing by deploying your template environment in a lockdown Docker container. Well, I hope this covers the first part and in the next part, we will dissect this vulnerability in further detail. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment on what content to produce in the future. It's been your host, Irvin, and thank you for watching.